Hi there, welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. This is a show all about prayer. I am Alana here with Jamie Hampton, and we are glad you joined us. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're a regular listener and want to make sure you don't miss any episodes, please hit subscribe. And we're just really glad to be here with you today. We're going to be talking about morning prayer routines. And some people are probably already cringing, being like, oh no, they're going to make me feel guilty if I'm not doing it exactly this way. Just a reminder, we are a complete no guilting zone here, uh, but we are looking forward to this discussion and we're going to open up with a word of prayer. God, we just thank you for the gift of prayer and that you hear us, God, whether it's in the morning or the evening or any other time, Lord, you are willing to meet with us when we draw near to you. And we just pray that you would be with us at this moment, that you would just be encouraging us with your word and just with... Um, just ideas and thoughts on morning prayer routines and just allow us to just put one more tool into our tool belt um, that we can pull out and use um, to draw us closer to you and to deepen our prayer lives. Amen. And our verse of the day is coincidentally, not really coincidentally at all, about <laughs> praying in the morning. Um, they're actually there. Do you see what I did there? So Psalm 5.3 in the ESV says, Oh Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. And there are so many verses that mention praying in the morning. And there are so many times that mention Jesus praying in the morning when it was early or before it was even light. And I think that's significant. Um, so it kind of, you know, it's, it's appropriate for our discussion. But before we get into our discussion, we do want to have a just for fun question to kind of get things off to a fun start. Um, so Alana, just for fun, since we're talking about morning prayer routines, how do you take your coffee? So it's, it's evolved over the years. I actually never drank coffee. I had my very first cup on my honeymoon. I'm like, oh, that doesn't taste all that good. And then went several years not drinking it at all. And, you know, like pregnancy, nursing, like it was fine. Like other moms were like, oh, I miss coffee or I know I shouldn't have coffee, but I'm going to anyway. I'm like, what's the big deal about coffee? Um, and then I started drinking it every once in a while in Sunday school. My husband and I were co-teaching a class for teens and I realized, and he realized, that mornings when I had coffee with me in Sunday school, I was a lot more conversant, <laughs> and so I would kind of have it just as a as a spiritual act of worship. The so that secret I weapon yeah. for the introvert. And and you know what's funny is for me at the beginning. So this was maybe like five years ago, and coffee was like a conduit for yummy creamers and flavors. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and then I still remember the book I wrote that turned me into a one a day cup of coffee drinker because again, I'm like, oh, I actually can stay way more alert. So now I actually use my coffee to kind of, um, it's sort of almost become ritualistic when I start my writing. It's I make my coffee, I get my computer loaded up and coffee is sort of the trigger to my brain that it's time to work. Um, and I've done really good. So I cut out sugar maybe a year ago and, and replaced it with about like a fifth of a cup of half and half. So that really like, that's, <laughs> no, that's not a benefit. Like that's not a good trade off. <laughs> so now maybe in the past half a year, I weaned off the half and half. So now I just have it with some almond milk unsweetened and I feel um, actually really good that I was able to do that. Cause like I said, I started coffee just because I liked the the flavor of the creamers with it. Well, I actually started my first, <laughs> this is kind of gross, but <laughs> <laughs> my first, the first time I drank coffee, I think was, so my parents would have like some family and friends over sometimes to play cards. And of course, being a kid, I would, they would be playing down in our we had like a family room in, in our basement mm -hmm. and they would be playing cards. And at some point I would go upstairs to bed and they would be there longer. And the next day, the next morning was usually a Saturday and I would go downstairs and there would be these half drunk cups of coffee. Ew. I know. Right. And I 
and not the not the ones with cream, but I know that my parents always drank black coffee. And so mm-hmm. I remember the first time I tried it, I, I drank the cold like day after coffee. Black I didn't too. think it was that bad. Really? And my parents always drank black coffee. And so I grew up and I, I think when I first really, like I would start drinking coffee. Um, we had a youth leader that for Sunday school would like, we felt so grown up because he would make a carafe of coffee and let us have coffee. So I started drinking coffee and it was always black because that's how my parents took it. And I really liked it. And then in college kind of got into more of a coffee routine and it was sort of that like ritualistic, like I would, there was a coffee shop I would go to, to study. Mm -hmm. There was a certain type of coffee I liked to get. And it was like a hazelnut flavored coffee. Um, And I would drink that while I studied. And it was kind of a brain trigger. Like I think more than just being like the caffeine. Not just the caffeine. No, I totally get it. Your brain really does. Like it, it was like, okay, this lighting, this coffee is Mm -hmm. study mode. My brain. Yeah. There really is kind of like a culture of coffee. I think that maybe being Alaskan, like, um, I went to visit my family in California a couple years ago or no, just about a year ago. I was really surprised that like they didn't make a big a to do about coffee like some days they'd have it some days they wouldn't they didn't like gasp cream or stuff yeah and I'm like oh like people live like that well what I realized coming up here from the lower 48 was that nobody tells you you can't take the coffee into the sanctuary yeah like no there's something about Alaska they were like it's Alaska yeah. Mm-hmm. They were like, oh yeah, you need your coffee. Take it on in. It doesn't matter how new the no carpet kidding. is or oh, no. whatever. Yeah. yeah. So. Alaskans are serious about their <laughs> coffee. Like and I think we don't, we have the highest coffee stand per capita. Oh, we I have to. We I mean, I, I barely saw them. We have these little coffee carts that are just, you know, kind of like um, food trucks only with just coffee. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I had not seen very many at all anywhere. You know, I've yeah. lived in Maryland, um, Nevada, Arizona, mm-hmm. hardly ever saw yeah. a little Alaskans coffee. Alaskans are drink. serious about our coffee. So I think I was kind of doomed to become a regular coffee drinker, being Alaskan. Being Alaskan. Being there's a no... writer, you yes. know. Um, yes. But anyway, <laughs> that was a fun tangent, but I'm not yeah. sure how conducive it is to praying in the morning. Although I, um, I definitely that, that ritual of coffee can be incorporated into a morning routine for sure. That was such a good segue. It really can. And, oh, yeah. You're right. and it can be something. Okay. So since I'm going to be honest, I am not a morning person. And mm-hmm. I just, I, I think living in Alaska makes me more tired in the mornings. I blame it on the darkness in the, in the winter, in the summer. Um, I don't know what my excuse is, but I really did shift <laughs> from being, I was never a super early riser when I didn't have to, but I enjoyed making myself get up early more than I do yeah. now. So but, but there is something really about coffee and looking forward to that coffee that you could pair, not that we don't look forward to prayer, but if we're really honest, sometimes we don't look forward to prayer sure. until we yeah. get into it. And then of course it's rewarding and you meet with God and that kind of spurs you on, but sometimes you don't look forward to prayer. It feels boring. It feels, um, Sometimes, and I'm going to be real honest here. It sometimes it feels like, oh my goodness, I'm I'm going to be wasting my time because mm-hmm. I have so much, have to so do. much to do. <laughs> and no, I hear you. Yeah. Well, and most people who talk about developing good and healthy habits, what they'll say is, if you're wanting to learn a new habit, you need to pair it with something you're already doing. Right. You know. So think about what you do already in the morning. And mm-hmm. how can you kind of use those, as we talked about coffee being a, a mental trigger, how can you use your morning routine to trigger something for prayer? You know, I'm going to pray for my day while I take a shower or, you know, a shower, even symbolically, if you're, you know, an every morning person, first thing you do is jump in the shower. That could even be a trigger of, you know, a confession kind of prayer, you know, praying for cleansing or as you're getting dressed, you know, be putting on the armor of God. There are quite a few prayer triggers that you can just add to your morning routine that aren't even taking away time from what you're already doing. They're just training it so that it's like, okay, when I do this, I am praying about that. Yeah, I like that. And that that really does. It also takes the burden of 
you know, if, if you're a daily showerer, then you're going to have to shower anyway. If you're, you know, you're going to put on clothes in the morning, you're going to do that anyway. Mm -hmm. It takes the burden of creating time away when it comes to, you know, those kinds of triggers. I went to visit a friend at a Christian college and I was at a different college, but I went to visit her and in the dorm room bathroom in each shower stall was a laminated little poster that just said pray naked. (laughs) And that was their reminder, you know, like, Hey, you're already here. Like showers can be relaxing, kind of meditative. It's not like you have a ton to focus on anyway. What better time to focus on that, even if it's not the entire time you're showering, you know, even if it's just these little triggers. When I wash my hair, I'm going to pray for my thoughts because, you know, my hair is by my brain or, you know, just different things like that. Yeah. Well, I have recently been listening to this audiobook, The Daniel Prayer by Anne Graham Lotz. And I've never read anything by her. I've read, I mean, I've heard her speak a couple of times and I've read a couple of her blog posts that have come through emails or social media or something, but I've never read a book of hers. And I, I really loved it. I'm always hesitant with a like gimmicky sounding name, like the Daniel right, prayer, right. pray this prayer and transform your life, you know, mm-hmm. because, but it's not like that. It's very much, let's take the life of Daniel who lived a very prayerful life and, and one particular prayer and situation that he prayed and look at the elements of it and, and, and how we apply that in different ways. It wasn't like, you know what I'm saying? I, I, mm-hmm. yeah. so it was, it's a really, really good book. I would highly recommend it. But really the, the biggest take home for me was that she was like reading my, my soul. I mean, she Aww. was, she was <laughs> like, she said, I'm not a morning person. And I, I can't remember what caused her to feel like she wanted to start her day with prayer. I don't know if it was reading in scripture mm-hmm. or if she was mentoring someone or I don't know what it was, but she realized, wow, I have been working and speaking about God more than I've been talking to God. And I can totally relate. I mean, there are mm-hmm. months where yeah. I talk more about prayer than I pray and yeah. that's hypocritical. And so when she said that, she said that she was very, you know, um, convicted. And I was too, because I do really well at the little spur of the moment prayers. I'm kind of in a conversation with God here and there throughout the mm-hmm. day, but mm-hmm. sitting down and carving out time to really listen and be still, I just am not very good and disciplined at. So she said that what she did, she tried first thinking, well, I want to wake up at five o'clock in the morning. And because at, at that time, that was what she had to do to carve out an hour of time. Um, and so she was going to wake up at five in the morning and get right to praying. And she fell asleep while she was praying. Mm -hmm. And so what she realized was that she had to do certain things before she prayed. It wasn't, she got up and immediately Mm -hmm. prayed. She had to get up, uh, get moving. Yeah. Get moving. I think for her, she went on a run or did some form of exercise and then had her coffee. I think she even said a triple espresso. (laughs) which I'm not there. Um, I'll drink my coffee black, but a triple espresso sounds a little, uh, I don't know. Heart attacky? Too, <laughs> too much. Um, and then she was ready to pray. So the takeaway for me was that, A, if you're not really a super morning person that loves to get up, which, you know, some people might, um, but I do not getting up and and going right into prayer might not be the best because you may not be at your best and so um you know being being free to do things like what you said when you're doing other things to pray but but the one thing that i really appreciated when she was talking about the prayer that i felt has been missing is time uninterrupted time with god and so i decided i was going to go and you know basically get the kids ready for school, make coffee and have coffee while I sat there and um, read my Bible and prayed. And it was really, it, it was really hard because my brain was not trained to be Mm -hmm. still. Mm -hmm. And we talk about this in our podcast. We talk about this in our courses and online retreats. Um, And I was experiencing this lack of discipline 
of quiet and, and, you know, there have been times when it's been there, but it doesn't take long for it to go away and, and for your, your brain to get unruly again. Mm -hmm. So, um, so what I found was it took several days of doing this and doing exactly what we talk about, which is, you know, quietly bringing your mind back to God. And the first day, I think that really was most of what I did. I did read Mm -hmm. scripture. I wrote down some notes. I meditated, but as I was just thinking and, and praying to God, I, I did a lot of just bringing myself back into his presence when my brain started to wander. Um, so yeah, that's, that. it's gotten easier though, exponentially so each day that I've been doing it. It's gotten think, way easier. Yeah. Where a lot of people get hung up is by beating themselves up for a mind that wanders. But again, like I've said this before, I really don't think that a a hundred percent pure focus in prayer really is the goal. And I don't want to discourage people, but part of me wonders if that's even attainable at all. Do you know what I mean? To be able to say, well, I'm going to, you know, my goal is to be able to pray for three hours without my mind wandering once, you know, it's kind of like, well, okay, but why? What's the point? Yeah, obviously you want to get that connection with God, but in my mind, as long as you're training your mind, I'm totally botching what I want to say, but you know, I guess my thought is it would be as if I went to my husband and like, hey Scott, I love you so much. I want to spend more time together. I want to work up to the fact so that three months from now, we can sit across the table from each other for four hours and always talk and not not have a conversational lull at at all and that's going to be the sign of us having a good marriage and good communication skills and that's not really like a natural thing you know what I mean right it's so like go ahead oh well it's not a relationship it's a project or a at that point it becomes a I don't know, a project Just a, a goal for the sake of or a goal for the sake of goal. Yeah. Or like a trophy maybe. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. So like for me, I sometimes love, and, and I, I want to get back to this whole idea about waking up early. Cause I do have some things to say about that. Mm-hmm. But sometimes I love waking up early, lying in bed, not getting out of bed. And Sometimes I'm praying directly. Sometimes I'm just enjoying the quiet. Sometimes I'm singing songs. Sometimes I'm thinking about what I want to do for the day. Like to me, that's, and sometimes I can do that for like an hour because my husband gets up for work before the kids are usually out of bed and awake. And so sometimes I'll just, you know, I wake up when he does, but stay in bed and sometimes can't even have this hour. No, I'm, I'm not going to say yes. And I lie in bed and pray for an hour because that's not what it is. But to me, it still is very much connecting with the Lord. It's not that every half a minute I, you know, take out a whip and hit myself on the back because my mind is wandered. It's just nice to be together, you know, with God with my thoughts, you know, just kind of, it's, it's an, a whole mix of being drowsy and daydreamy and prayerful and worshipful and just relaxed. And to me, no, that's not the definition of a quiet time. You know, like if, if that was the only connection I had with God during the day, I don't think that that's a healthy spiritual life, but I sure like that time, you know, and that time would absolutely be ruined if I made it like, oh, I I can't believe that I only spent like two minutes out of every five actually praying and the other three minutes thinking about my day or, you know, heaven forbid, I fall back to sleep. God must be so mad at me. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I don't don't see it like that at all. No, I agree. And I think when we get this picture in our head of God as being a tyrant that's ready to crack the whip, already we've lost the meaning of prayer in that. Mm -hmm. When we become kind of like, oh, you know, you take this posture of, I've already been a disappointment to him. Now I've got to earn back his love by establishing this early routine. Um, But again, it's always a balance. And so for me personally, I felt like it was an act of worship to make that time because, and it was kind of a first fruits offering because I knew that once I got into, you know, I tend to be more of a Martha and, and less of a Mary. And I knew that 
once I got into the routine of the day that it just, it would be gone. Then I've got, you know, my daughter's awake, my, you know, different things are going on and I'm distracted and not able to do it or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So for that time, for me, it was, it really was like, okay, I, I'm making this sacrifice of right. this time, but it wasn't like, I feel like I need to earn this relationship with God. Um, and I honestly don't know that it's going to be something that I do long-term every morning. Right. Mm-hmm. I think for now, for this season, it was actually really neat because I had been asking God some questions just about direction and, you know, um, different things, just wanting to hear from him. Yeah. And in those first, well, not the first day, but the second, third ish, fourth day in that area, I just got revelation. You know, I felt like God really spoke to me during that time. And it was through the scripture that I was reading. It was just in general, but just from being still and not being so doing stuff focused. And I think it was a combination of inviting God into my thoughts because not all of it was just prayer list, you know, or, or pray and listen, pray and listen. Some of it was wandering thoughts into Mm -hmm. different areas that, that I kind of used as a springboard. Like, well, I'm thinking about this. Maybe you want to talk to me about this. What, tell me, what are you thinking here? And I would write a question Mm -hmm. prompt in my journal and just wait, you know? Yeah. And yeah, so it was really interesting, but it wasn't neat and packaged in a bow and it never is. I mean, as you all know, you know, when you pray, the more tidy we try to make prayer, the less, I guess, the more we restrict God and, and kind of so. the more projecty it becomes. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> Using a made up word. I, I think it absolutely fits. So <laughs> let's go back to this morning thing. I'm just going to be... Um, kind of devil's advocate. And and I hope, I hope I didn't put you, Jamie, in a, in a position where you felt like you had to defend your morning routine, because in spite of everything I, I did say, I do think that having that structure is absolutely beneficial. I wasn't being defensive. I was not being defensive. <laughs> How dare you call me defensive? No, I did yeah, not do that This has all. been the Praying Christian Women podcast. We'll see you guys. <laughs> We're going to duke it out off the air. <laughs> No, seriously, that did not in any way. And I love, this is what I love, is that we can bring both sides and or multiple facets of yeah. issues and talk about them. No, I, I did not feel defensive. Okay, so, okay, yeah. I'm glad to hear it. Not at so, all. Here is something that I, it used to be that anytime someone said, well, I don't have time for this, the answer, no matter what it was, I don't have time to exercise, I don't have time to read, I don't have time to clean the house, I don't have time to pray. The answer was always, well, just wake up earlier and teach your body to do with less sleep. And um, yeah, there might be situations where that does make the most sense. And it sounds like, you know, right now, I like how you kind of put it as, um, you know, like a first fruits offering of your time and sort of a sacrifice. And I think that's wonderful and awesome. I also think that sleep is wonderful, awesome, and often overrated. <laughs> I mean, underrated. Underrated. Oh, no, underrated, absolutely. You know? And I bet most of us don't get enough sleep. In yeah. Enough. And, and that can have huge impacts on just your, your mental health, your physical health. Anything that helps your brain is going to help your prayers. And sleep is so mm-hmm. beneficial for, you know, just your brain to reset So I think there are absolutely times where God will wake you up in the middle of the night and call you to be praying all night. And those are amazing times, but don't feel guilty if your body just says, Hey, we need sleep. Like, you know, even the disciples in the garden, like they needed their sleep. Um, Now that was a case where they were supposed to be praying. So I'm not, don't make sleep an excuse or an idol, but also like, I, I don't feel like, we need to deny sleep in order to get things done. Like I firmly believe that there is time to accomplish what we need. So that leads me to another question that I wanted to, um, to bring up. And I'm, you already kind of mentioned this idea of like seasons of prayer, like at this season in your life, it makes sense for you to have this morning prayer routine. Um, 
And it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be doing this, you know, until you're 90 years old, <laughs> like at the exact, you know, the exact same time, the exact same way. So I'm thinking of somebody like um, the first scenario that popped into my mind when you were talking, like, pretend I'm a, a nurse and I'm working like three 12 and a half hour long shifts. And so I'm listening to this podcast episode and thinking to myself, man, I really need to start my day in prayer. I guess I should wake up half an hour earlier to do that, but it just is not working just physically. What, what are your thoughts for something like that? Do you just plow through it until your body learns to do without that sleep or are there other options? No, I really don't. I, I think, and also I don't get up at 5 a.m. Just FYI. I, yeah. I didn't want to imply that just Sorry, because Anne. Graham, <laughs> yeah, just cause she got up early. I, I do not get up that early, but, um, but no, I, I really, I mean, it's like we said, prayer is a relationship and I'd say, you know, just go to God and say, what are my first fruits? For me, like, what does that yeah. look like? What does first fruits look like for me in my life with my schedule? Because there are a lot of schedules that are not typical or, mm -hmm. you know, that are, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, when my mom was um, suffering from dementia, she was awake through the night and my dad was basically walking around with her through Aww. the night and not getting sleep and then waking up in the morning, you know, getting maybe an hour of sleep if that, oh, uh, and then trying to work. Um, if you're in a situation that has extenuating circumstances, I mean, I'll take my dad's situation. Maybe yeah. he could use that time with my mom to pray. You know, if you're mm -hmm. caring for someone difficult, if you're up with a baby. Up with a baby. baby. I was just going to say that. Every <laughs> You know, what do they say? They, An hour and a half every, of yeah. my kid. Right. And my kid would nurse for like 45 minutes. And then, oh, yeah, you know, anyway, long. not to get into my. Yeah. Our new mom war stories. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> that's another episode <laughs> for another day. That would be fun. Um, but yeah. Sleep deprived prayers. How sleep about deprived that? prayers. <laughs> but you know, using that time when you wake up anyway to, to be praying and incorporating that. Um, yeah. Do not, I would, I would say definitely, if you want to give your best to God, you want to be at your best. And so oh, even, that's such a good way to put it. I'm going to hit, let's write that down and we'll make a little, you know, like <laughs> a meme, a placard. <laughs> a um, placard. I love it. But even Ann Graham was saying she realized she had to go to bed earlier in order to yeah. get up at the time that she wanted to get up. And so, you know, it, it get your eight hours. I mean, if you can yeah. possibly do it and if you can't, then, you know, definitely go to God because God is creative also. And sure. God can give you ideas if you don't have them yourself, but come up with ways and get your heart in a place where you are making it a priority in a way that doesn't sacrifice your health. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I think that's a great great, um, great advice. And do you want to dive in? I, I know you've talked a little bit about what your morning routine right now does look like. Do you, um, I guess just practical tips, like should a morning routine always consist of this, this or that, or are there some things that, you know, every day you should be doing or, or what it, for people who like just sort of the write it down in a list and tell me what to do. <laughs> what would you offer to them for kind of starting their own morning prayer routine? Yeah. I mean, obviously it's different for everybody, but if you're looking for kind of a getting you started, some of what I did kind of came from the book that I was reading. Um, but just to have your Bible handy and to know where it is and have a place, you know, we talked about how coffee is a trigger for your mind. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that place that you go to, I have a chair in the corner that was actually, it's in our like kitchen area. And that kind of has become my Bible study slash prayer chair. And it is just a place that I know I go there. I have, we have like a little wood, wood burning stove and I keep my yeah, Bible in my really journal there. Yeah, that's a cozy corner. Yeah. Yeah. And so I just, that's where I go and I'll sit there and I can hide from the kids if they're around. I'll just <laughs> curl up and they don't even know I'm there. It's really... <laughs> I don't do that. I don't hide from my children routinely, but, um, <laughs> unless you go in the garage, right. The garage is another story, <laughs> but 
it is to have a place because just going there, it just kind of makes me like I crack the blinds a little so I can see out the back door. Mm -hmm. And it's just nice to have that. Like, I don't know, it just feels like it gets my mind ready. And yeah. um, so maybe have a place that you routinely go if you want to do it, mm -hmm. have your Bible handy. And, you know, like Ann Graham Lotz was saying, have a Bible specifically for your prayer time. But, you know, that's up to you if you want to do that. Not everybody has more than one, but I have just, I have a Bible sitting there. And, I could um, see it being useful though, like kind of in the same way, like if you're struggling to get to the gym, people will be like, well, pack your bag the night before. Right. You know, I could see it just so you know exactly where it is. You've got all your stuff right there. Yeah. It's and if you're best. like me, you're, if you're like me, you get easily distracted. So exactly. if I go to look for the Bible, I'll run into my daughter and oh, have to do sure. something there or I find yeah. something that needs to be washed in the laundry. So yeah, just yeah. having everything right there. Um, I definitely like incorporating scripture in, so reading scripture first to kind of prime my mm -hmm. mind and just hear from God and have it available for later also if I am praying and a, a verse comes to my mind that I want to mm -hmm. dig deeper mm -hmm. into because sometimes that'll happen. Like, That's so I'll cool. read, what happened to me is I was reading a scripture and I actually just randomly picked, um, what I, I'm trying to think what I picked. I think it was you Joshua. Know. It was Joshua. So I picked the book of Joshua because I wanted to be in the Old Testament because I uh -huh. focus so much on the new. So right, I was like, I'm right. be in the Old Testament. So I went there. But I was reading the story there and just several things really came out to me just and and like lessons that I learned that I hadn't noticed before. Mm -hmm. And then I stopped and just asked God, what do you want to show me in this? And then other verses would come to my mind. And I thought, well, I know that verse is somewhere. What does that say? And then I would go and look in the Bible and it was more clear kind of what God maybe was trying to yeah. tell me through that verse. Mm -hmm. So I think having the Bible is really important. Um, how you go about it. Um, the, the journal that I have is actually just like, I have two journals. I have one where I write kind of a like diary type thing, yeah. but then I have this spiral notebook that I actually use for, and this was inspired by you, Alana. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have this spiral notebook that I use for both my personal like home stuff and also ministry slash podcast work stuff that I have kind of two columns and I use sticky notes, which is what you've told me. Yeah, that you I love sticky notes. notes. <laughs> this revolutionized my, oh, my no. little prayer journal. I love this. So for those of you that don't know, do you want to explain your sticky note Kind of. Yeah. I mean, I use sticky notes for everything, but, but what, what you're talking about, I think is, you know, how if you're praying for something and in the back of your mind, it's, oh, I need to do this. Oh, I need to do that. So basically, if you're praying for your day and you have a sticky note right there with you, you can put those things that you don't want to forget or things on your to-do list just right there on the sticky note. And then basically what you're doing is it's like, it's telling your brain, okay, I'm going to remember that and come back to it later. So otherwise you're trying to like keep five or 10 different things in the back of your head, which is, you know, that takes quite a bit of mental energy. Um, so it's just a way to, as thoughts come into your head, to jot them down. You can also use them for, you know, any kind of prayer list. I mean, there's so many things, but. Um, well, so the way I use it specifically for my list is I have two columns. And so I'll have um, one sticky note with goals, for, goals for the week. And I pick my one thing, mm -hmm. you know, which oh, is cool. what you had encouraged me to do is mm -hmm. one goal. If you do nothing else this week yeah. mm -hmm. in your home, what's it going to be? And I can't tell you how many weeks it's laundry, get the laundry done and folded and put away, <laughs> but yeah. just something in your in home life that you want, or maybe it's have a conversation with my oldest because I feel like he's, you know, whatever, whatever it is that your goal for, for your home is, your personal life. And then you can have other stuff underneath that too of, you know, the to do. And then on the other column, I have podcasts, ministry, those kinds of things. And I'll put what is my one thing for the week that I want to get done this week. And then I have down below it, I have sticky notes for the day. So today, what is cool. the one thing, mm -hmm. you know, and that was, you had kind of helped me talk me through that at one point. And it's so helpful. I love having that. And then on the next page, I have sticky notes for each of my family members. And oh, neat. so I have my, in a list form, not on sticky notes. I have my prayers for the unsaved. I have the people that are on that list, but my sticky notes are one for each of my family members. And I started doing, cause 
I, the kids are always, you know, in my stuff and it's sitting there in the middle where everybody could see it. So <laughs> I did these one word prayers and I really mm-hmm. like them because they're, you can kind of make them ambiguous. Yeah. So it's a word that'll remind me like, you know, one word is yoked. And I have this picture in my mind of one of my children that maybe is a little unruly at times, Mm -hmm. maybe needs a little bit of reining it in, but wanting them to be yoked both Mm -hmm. with Christ and just yoked in, in terms of like harnessed, empowered to have self-control and things like that. So I can just write that word down and my kid's not going to look on there and be like, hmm, under my name, it says self-discipline and obedience. And mom thinks I'm a terrible child. Right? (laughs) So No, that's cool. Yeah. And I just, the same thing. And so I just kind of, as the stream of consciousness, as it comes to mind. And so then I'll pray down that list. And sometimes my list gets long or I think of different ones and I'll take the sticky note off and do a new one. Yeah. Just re, yeah. Yeah. So it's fun. Cycle, repurpose. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, we need to start a line of like prayer journal sticky notes. That would be like fun, actually. Let's edit that part out so that we have the market cornered. We don't oh, want anyone out point. there, that's you know, point. stealing right there. <laughs> like the prayer Fitbit thing. Trademark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I am super glad we got to have this conversation. Um, I guess, you know, you left us with all kinds of great, great ideas. Can you tell the name of that book one more time? If people yes, want to look it's it called out. The Daniel Prayer by Anne Graham Lotz. She's awesome. uh, Billy Graham's daughter. Yeah. And we talked a decent amount about, um, you know, kind of prayer journaling in this. So this is a good segue. We're, we're all about the segues on this episode. We're kind of just yeah. it's like nailing these segues. Mm-hmm. God must be blessing us for waking up earlier and praying every morning. <laughs> he loves us now. We kid, we kid. <laughs> <laughs> um. We have released a video series called, um, I think it's called A Busy Christian's Guide to Prayer Journaling. Does that sound right, Jamie? Yes, I like it. And so it's got um, short videos as well as like printables and things that will help you. Just there are so many different things you can do with a prayer journal. So honestly, like we've talked today about maybe a tenth of of what actually can be done with a prayer journal. And we have examples as well as just time for you to do it yourself and just sort of see which prayer journaling exercises really work well for you. So you can access that course at prayingchristianwomen.com slash journaling. We would love to have you join us and leave us a review on the podcast if you're enjoying the show. We would love to just hear that, and it really helps spread the word, too, about what we're doing. And now we're going to leave you with our blessing and benediction. May God free you from fear and anxiety today. May you look to your future with courage and hope. May he silence all your fears and keep your mind from senseless worry. May you rest secure in the arms of the great shepherd who tends and cares for his sheep with tenderness and mercy. May all your days be blessed with the joyful presence of your loving Father, and may you laugh in days to come. And our benediction is from Hebrews 13, 20 to 21. Now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen.